guys, I just woke up. It's um, one o'clock, which is really bad even for me, but I did get welcomed to a scone from M and Bay Yes, which is my dream come true. So I'm gonna pack into that and see where the day takes me. To light my candles in the morning, just because I feel like if your room smells nice, it's gonna put you in a good mood and get you off to a good start to the day. This is supposed to have three wicks on it, but one of them just disappeared, which will always be a mystery. Some of my wicks now just don't work, and I literally have no idea how to fix it, including this one, which is expensive and probably my favorite. It just won't light. I'm gonna have to ask my mum about that. <laughs> she knows about this stuff. This one doesn't have a scent, it just looks cool. <laughs> um, I also have an essential diffuser. I normally put lavender in there or lemongrass. <coughs> I feel like not only does that smell good, but it actually has some health benefits. Update, my mum got it to work by melting the wax around it. She knows so many life hacks, I swear to God. Let's see if I can do it on this one. Yeah. Okay, I probably lit far too many candles because the scents are all gonna blur into one and <laughs> ruin each other. I'm watching the blinds now. Okay, I also like to just whack on some music whilst I tidy my room because it's currently an absolute safe. Um, I'm absolutely loving Mick Jenkins at the moment. His song Communicate. Is just next level and um who else i'm not a fan of radiohead in general but there's this one song weird fishes i'm just living for it so i'm gonna put them on and tidy my room and then get dressed for the day i'm also very excited because the post i ordered last week has just arrived so i'm gonna open it right now It's always a worry that these things are going to be really bad quality, but... Uh, it's great. It's really good. It's great quality. I feel like I wouldn't have minded it a little bit bigger, actually. I think I went for A3. It looks smaller than A3, but... Kind of debating whether or not to put it in a frame. I'm not really a frame person. Because I want to have a wall of posters. Um, yeah, I'll put it up later, see how it looks. But I think if I was going to put it in a frame, I'd put it in a white frame. Also, I'm fully aware of how I look in this hair. I look like a five-year-old girl about to go to ballet class. <laughs> But I made the fatal mistake of going to bed with damp hair and my barnet is currently an absolute mess so this is me from now on. <laughs> Peak laziness because I usually have to straighten my hair and A it's really bad for your hair because I was blonde um, for about a year I think. Yeah I was blonde for about a year. So my hair's already really damaged. I've been using like Olaplex and sort of um, bonding conditioner, a uh, bonding repair conditioners and stuff like this, leave-in sprays, in an attempt to try and save it. But at the moment, it's just frizzy all the time. And it's a vicious cycle of like, oh, it's really frizzy and damaged, so I'm gonna have to straighten it. But that obviously makes the damage worse. Moral of the story, kids: don't keep dyeing your hair different colours because I finally realised that blonde just didn't suit me and. I was young, I wanted to experiment and try it, so in a way I don't regret it because I always would have wanted to know. But I look far better with the darker hair colours and I had to dye it dark myself because obviously the pandemic hairdressers aren't open. So it's currently kind of 
brown with blonde patches, shall we say. I'm going to call them highlights. Um, so yeah, it's not an ideal situation. I've made a lot of mistakes in my hair journey. I think everyone who knew me when I was younger was like, your, your hair colour was so nice, your natural hair colour. Never diet, of course. Realistically, was not going to go my whole life without dyeing my hair? No. So I'm kind of glad that I put it out of the way. I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to let my natural hair colour grow out, even though it could probably take about five years to grow out the whole thing. But <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to mix it up in the end and to go with some pigtails, which probably make me look even younger. But I think it's quite a cute look. So I'm now just going to go for a walk with a friend and I'll check in with you guys later. So I just got back from my walk and I've made myself some matcha. Um, I finally found the perfect flavour combination because matcha is not the nicest of taste, let's be real. Um, if you do it badly it could actually taste like soil and human waste, it's actually pretty rank. but. Um, almond milk, obviously, ice, and vanilla flavouring, um, I think it's called vanilla syrup, I'm not sure of the exact one, I think it begins with M, but wax some of that in, and a little bit of honey, and um, yeah, it just tastes, I'm not going to say great, it's tolerable, but I've seriously, I've been doing, I've been drinking matcha every day for about two months now, and I'm not just saying I've really noticed a difference in my brain power. Um, yeah, it's definitely boosted my performance mentally. And I'm not just saying that. Um, I genuinely have noticed a difference. So if you're thinking about starting to drink matcha, I would 100% go for it. Um, it's quite expensive. Don't buy it from Tesco or London Bar or any of those places. I bought a jar of it from Amazon. Um, I think it was like 9.99, but it's a big jar and you only see a tiny bit of matcha in your drink, so it should last ages and it's well worth the money. So I think I'm going to do something creative now because it always makes me feel good and I also really badly need to paint my nails because the situation is, is dire on the nail front. It's usually a reflection of like how I'm feeling, whether I'm feeling motivated or not, how chipped my nails are because frankly I've been putting it off for like a week, but it's got to be done. I might go for black this time. I'm really boring. I usually just go for white or black. <laughs> So I'm just about to start my creation. Um, I like to sit on the floor when I make art, it just makes me feel more creative for some reason. Um, the object of my painting today is going to be my cactus. <laughs> um, essentially I can't get enough cactuses, this cactus genuinely brought this room to life. This room was nothing with us. <laughs> That's no exaggeration either. Um, so I had this idea last night. What if I could do like a coloured cactus, like a pink one? Oh my god, someone just messaged me. <laughs> oh god. About my YouTube. <laughs> I genuinely feel so insecure about exposing myself in this way, but fuck it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, and I had an idea to like paint this cactus in like pink colour. Um, so yeah, before I start, I like to pencil in outlines first, just because I do struggle to get the shapes and the proportions right. It's always something I've struggled with. Um, so I like to get that bit right first, and then I feel like I'm on a good track. Um, but 
yeah, I'll show you guys the end result. It could take a long time, so. <laughs> right, guys. Um, I've had a change of heart. Um, I do want to do a cactus. Um, I just feel that it could use a longer, just bigger in general ca canvas. So I've got this other plant. Um, I just want to have a room, not just full of plants, but also painted plants. <laughs> so this is not going to be easy. Um, usually I'd sort of pencil it in a bit more. I've just done the pot, but I reckon I'm just going to freestyle it. I just want to have fun with it, do something that's a bit more abstract. Just see how it turns out. So, yeah. I'm actually so pissed off. Just started my painting. And the fucking end fell off my brush. It's marked my pot. This shit only happens to me, honestly. So it's going... It's going alright so far. I don't despise it. I usually despise my art until the last kind of 10 minutes of it coming together. My art never seems to look good until the finishing touches. Um, but I feel like that's probably the case for a lot of people. Um, I also just feel like more shit art needs to be shown because people never show their bad art. <laughs> they only show their good art. And let's be real, every piece of art's gonna be good. I think part of the joy of doing art is realizing the fact that not everything you do is gonna be good or perfect because if you put too much pressure on it, you're not gonna enjoy it. And the reason for doing art is for enjoyment and to de-stress and the NHS are actually describing being creative as a treatment for anxiety and depression, which just shows you shows you how powerful it can be. Um, just to focus on the moment, to think of the now, don't think of the past, don't think about the future, just be present in the moment. That's why I like the paint and honestly, sometimes it doesn't matter whether the end result is good or bad, as long as you enjoy the journey. <laughs> as cringe as it sounds. But um I was having a really com interesting conversation with my friend Harry earlier that I thought I'd talk about. Um, he was telling me how when he went for his interview at Oxford, Oxford University, yeah, <laughs> um, he met this girl and they shared like a really magical night together. They like went to the library and then like stayed after dark and got caught when the alarm went off. And like, if you've seen that movie after, it sounds exactly like that. He said it was just such a magical memory, um, and that night they they stayed up talking for hours, and yeah, it just sounds incredible. And he said that um, they did swap numbers and stuff, but he doesn't want to ruin the memory of that night because he says that cherishing the memory and leaving the memory, preserving it as it is, is like more important than. perhaps talking to some more and the memory being ruined because I think a lot of the time when you fancy someone you kind of create this idea of who they are in your head before you actually get to know them and then when you do get to know them you kind of the dream that you had of them sort of dies and uh, you sort of maybe have the honeymoon period when everything's all right initially and nice but then you discover everything about them and there's nothing else to excite in some ways. So I thought it was a really interesting um, concept, the fact that the reality never really lives up to the expectations. And he was saying that like almost the apprehension before kissing someone is more enjoyable than the actual kiss sometimes. And um, I thought that was really interesting, but he's, he's trying so hard to preserve that memory. And he told me that they only message each other once a year to say happy anniversary of meeting, but they don't have any other conversation. <laughs> that was really interesting. Um, I said to him, like, do you not think you might regret it on your deathbed, like, not finding out what it could have been or if it could have been anything more, but he's so insistent that he wants to preserve the memory because the memory might be more special than anything else. So I thought that was um, a really interesting concept. I kind of, I guess it's kind of the same in relationships, like, it's really enjoyable and fun and exciting exhilarating to start with but then you get very comfortable with each other and perhaps things get a bit more boring and like but my answer to that would be don't let someone know everything about you I think it's good to always leave a bit of mystery 
always leave a bit of the puzzle unsolved because it's like a, a nut that you just can't crack and you want to keep trying to crack. <laughs> um, I'm not exactly an expert, but I think it's never good to reveal everything about yourself. Even though I'm sat here talking to you guys, <laughs> exposing myself on the internet. Um, yeah, you always want to keep it, things interesting. Even if it's just trying new things for yourself and things that you don't involve your partner and I think that's a good way to keep things fresh if you like. Not that I'm any relationship expert, but... Yesterday a cruel and sick joke was played on me. Um, it was going around Facebook that Bridgerton season 2 was coming out next week as a surprise, of course. I didn't realise it was April Fool's Day, did I? So I didn't believe it for all of about five minutes. But I didn't see anything too major this year. I think <laughs> Piers Morgan was kind of funny because he said that the um, now that the Archbishop of Canterbury has come out to confirm that Harry and Meghan didn't get married three days before the wedding, ITV had opened his job back. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Um, <laughs> I didn't agree with everything he said, but I did think that he was, he, whatever you say about Piers Morgan, he was extremely good at his job. And I think watching him grill government ministers genuinely helped me get through the pandemic. It just, <laughs> it was just so entertaining. Like, I'm pretty sure he brought Matt Hancock to tears <laughs> one time on the show. I mean, whatever you say about him, he's extremely good at his job. And if I'm being completely honest, I'd probably wouldn't bother to tune in to DMB anymore because it's just not the same. I know that he had a lot of controversial views but I think we shouldn't be living in this cancel culture where you know you're hated. You have you don't have to actively dislike someone because they have different views to your own. He's perfectly entitled to think wherever he wants and you can disagree with him, but he's got so much hate on Twitter. After what happened with Harry and Meghan and all of that kind of stuff. And I do think he should have been way more sympathetic towards obviously a very traumatic ordeal that she went through. And, you know, saying she was suicidal and everything like that, like he should have been a lot more respectful in that sense but I just don't believe I just don't think he believed what they were saying I don't think he's a racist but you know who am I to say anything on that topic I'm really not um but yeah I thought that was quite funny I didn't really see any others but that was cool about Bridgeton it genuinely was. Um, slowly but surely it's coming along. I'm not going to show you until the end. I bet this looks really weird on camera, but I put the camera right next to the plant. <laughs> I really struggle with angles. literally hear my stomach rumbling I hope you can't hear that on camera oh god that's terrible what I like about acrylics though is that you can just wait for it to dry and then go over it I've never tried using oils but I think they take ages to dry Got a bit tipped up now. So this is where we are with the painting. I don't know how I feel about it in all honesty. I kind of, I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. Like, it's kind of what I had in mind, but 
I don't know whether to add anything. I accidentally got green on there and that's made that patchy, which is so freaking annoying. But I'm going to try to keep going over it with white, see if I can get rid of the patches. Seems to just be making it worse. Um, background wise, I was thinking of just leaving it white. But now I'm thinking that blue might look quite good. I always consult my mum on these kinds of things. She usually knows the best thing to do, so. <sighs> I think that's enough painting for one day, though. I think I'll pack it in now and. So yeah, we can firmly conclude that I'm no Picasso, um, yeah, but it's not abominable. <laughs> so I think I'm going to make some dinner now. I might do like sweet potato fries, corn chicken nuggets, which are just the business. And yeah. Do you want to be a flower from now on? Yeah.